Our first comedian is a regular here. We really love him. Give him some love. He's a Jew from New York, Jeff Simon. <laughs> Give it up to Scotty. He's one of the top divorce lawyers in the country. In fact, I've got divorced so many times I have him on speed dial. Or whatever you call it. Like top five on my cell phone. Whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> fuck knows, yeah. Uh, a a any Jews here? Woo! Oh, any Jews? Woo! Do you have a, a, a Mercedes, a Beamer, or a Lexus? Do you have a summer house? <laughs> Seasons tickets to the Knicks or the Rangers? No. You're not a Jew. You're not a real Jew. Do you have any real Jews here? Do you have any real Jews here? You, you're a Jew wannabe. That's what you are. Do we have any real Jews here? Nobody that a Beamer, Lexus, Summer House, anything? You gotta be kidding me. Well, anyway, I, I'm a Jew wannabe too, because I don't have any of that shit. You know, uh, I could have been, I could have been rich, but uh, I didn't invest in uh, bowling alleys in the late '50s. I got destroyed in the dot-com bubble of the '90s, and the. Uh, the housing bubble of uh, oh wait it was strike three, you know, <laughs> strike three after that, you know, and uh, yeah, let's see, a a any Christians here? Come on, any Christians? Sure. Can any? What are you? Are you people in witness protection? Christians? <laughs> are there any any Muslims? <laughs> jihads? Jihads? I'm getting out of here. Jihads? I have a Mexican. I was gonna ask, I just had a flood in my basement. All, all the sheetrock has got to be replaced. I, I need like two Mexicans, like ASAP. You know? uh, I tell you, the, the best, uh, my favorite period of Jewish history is 4,000 years ago. You know, when the, Jew, when the Jews were wandering around the desert trying to find uh, the Upper East Side, <laughs> or, or the uh, or the five towns. But they, they pissed God off, and he made him settle in Israel. Uh, I, I grew up in the 50s. I was a big baseball fan. My favorite Yankee was George Weiss, the general manager. He was, he was the only Jew in the organization. Hmm. Hey, they can't win them all. You know, come on. Uh, the best deal I ever made was marrying a shiksa. Does anybody know what that is? Yeah. Uh, that's a girl that's not Jewish. We had three kids. None of them got by mitzvah. I made a hundred grand on that deal. Uh, we, we got married by a priest and a rabbi. My wife's priest was a great guy. He stayed for the whole wedding. Everybody loved him. When he first met me, he hated me because I was a Jew. But when I showed him a naked picture of my eight-year-old nephew, <laughs> he, he gave me a high five said, I'll do the ceremony. And when, when the ceremony was over, my, my rabbi, my rabbi, uh, I, I gave him a $100 bill. And before the money was out of my hand, this guy was running out the door to his next gig. <laughs> I, at least I re realized wh wh why, why this guy was the only person wearing sneakers at my wedding, you know? <laughs> running out the fucking door. Uh, yeah, and uh, um, yeah, the, but the best thing about being a Jew is everybody thinks you're smart, you know? About money. About money, like uh, when I'm talking about money, everybody hangs out every word I'm saying, like I'm, like I'm Dr. Alan Greenspan. You know? uh, I wish this, I wish I had this power with women. Women do not take me seriously. Like if I say to a woman, I'm very attracted to you, I want to have sex with you, she'll just start laughing. You know, a Jew cannot make this line work. You know, like uh, if I said to you, uh, I want to have sex, you're hot. Well, you're laughing, right? You're just going to laugh. Right? <laughs> How about you? Same thing, right? Yeah. No, nobody takes me seriously, you know? Uh, I tell you, I, was on, I was, went on Match.com, uh, I think it was last night. Went on Match.com. Anybody on Match.com here? Nobody likes to admit that. Especially when they're with their girlfriends. Anybody on Match.com? I clicked on this lady's profile who was like 50, and uh, she had a cute face. And uh, she has three kids living at home, still living at home. They got to be in their thirties, you know. And her body type is, I'll tell you later. <laughs> she smokes a pack and a half a day, and she never drinks, which is code for I'm like, I'm an alcoholic. I mean, that's what's out there. You know, if you guys have girlfriends.
Keep them. I mean, because that's what's out there, you know? The, I, the last time I had a date on Match.com, the woman lied about her age. She was supposed to be 50, she was in her 70s. I couldn't get her wheelchair in my car. It, like, it wouldn't fold up, you know? So uh, she made me stop over at the drugstore on the way to the restaurant to get her polygrip. And then when she was blowing me in her apartment, she kept biting my dick really hard. I don't know if her mouth was small or her dentures are loose, I don't know. And then she says, are you, are you gonna take me out again? I says, yeah, but we're gonna have to take Accessoride. You know what that is? Public transportation for the elderly and the handicapped? I, I, I can't spend an hour getting your wheelchair on my car. And then, uh, I tell you, I never do the right thing. I, this, I never do the right thing. You know, like, uh, when I'm driving, I never let anybody in unless I'm high on weed and the woman is really hot. And uh, if I'm on a 10 item or less line at the supermarket, uh, I, I'm always way over. And I was in the elevator this morning, and uh, this lady starts screaming, hold the door, hold the door. I press the closed door button. Why is everybody in such a fucking hurry? You know, and then, then the elevator's coming in three seconds. And then, uh, uh, what, I got, the mailman delivered my neighbor's mail to me by accident. You believe it? What, what do you, what do you, what do you do when you get your neighbor's mail by accident? What do you do? What? Give it back. You give it back? I open it, okay? I, I love reading other people's mail. I really do. Well, they delivered from a cancer doctor who gave it back to her. But then there was, uh, I opened up her MasterCard bill. Her credit card, I really felt bad because the minimum payment was $25, but she has to pay a $35 late fee because she's not going to be able to pay this bill on time. And then I opened up this mutual, mutual card. He used to be a spider on LaGuardia before he went to law school, you know. All right, you can all set to land. And then, uh, and then this lady had this, this mutual fund statement, you know, mutual fund. She's like $50,000 worth of mutual funds, which, didn't, which did not surprise me. And, uh, one of the, the, the funds were pretty flat, except for this, like, one fund was Lord Abbott, it was up 20%. I call up my broker, he's a fat Jew, I said, how come I'm not in the Lord Abbott fund? <laughs> he goes, uh, he goes, humming a humming a humming. I get, get off your fat ass, get me in the fund, and stop being a lazy Jew. And, and any Jews here, where are the Jews? Raise your hand if you're a Jew. Don't be, don't get fat and lazy, please. And then, uh, I get this, I opened the, the last thing I opened up was this like thank you card from her granddaughter for, for the birthday gift. Five dollar, five dollar, five dollar check. The, the cheapest gift, the cheapest toy in Toys R Us is fifty dollars. I mean, th this bitch got fifty thousand dollars worth of mutual funds and all she could spend is five dollars on, uh, on, on her grandchild. What are you going to take it to the grave with you? Okay, uh, Scotty wants me, he wants the mic back. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. You're a great guy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, let's hear it. Keep it going. Let's keep that going. All right. All right.